Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts and BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to make a shark themed knife. Now for this project I actually ended up making two knives. Uh, both of them were made from AEBL stainless steel, which is a high quality stainless steel. The handles or scales were cast with fossilized uh, shark teeth. One of the handles just had a few shark teeth and a black liner and the other was a conglomerate where I completely filled the mold. I covered the uh, making or casting of the handles on a previous video and I will put a link uh, in the description below. But on this video we're going to go through the, the entire rest of the process of putting the knife together. So it starts with my standard uh, AEBL stainless steel knife blanks and I used a, a tilt table and this is a, a bevel grinding jig that Jason Northgard and I uh, design, manufacture and, and sell. Um, it's very easy to grind nice even bevels uh, with, this, with this jig. It basically just holds the blade flat, you move the blade up into contact with the belt and you pull it along. Uh, it just gives you a, a surface to rest and to establish that bevel angle. So anyway, I, I ground bevels, both sides. Of course, I had scribed uh, center lines on the edge of the blade prior. Those are called railroad tracks, and that gives you a visual reference so that while you're grinding, you can kind of grind evenly to that um, or to those railroad track lines. And a, a good, nice bevel is, is really at the heart of most knife making projects. Now, I'm, I didn't show the heat treating process, but AEBL is heat treated in an oven uh, 1960 degrees for 15 minutes. It was plate quenched um, and then went into dry ice for a sub-zero quench. And after that, it went into an oven 395 degrees, um, two cycles of two hours, uh, letting it cool you know, completely in between without opening the door for tempering. Uh, after this heat treating process, I just cleaned up the bevels, and that's very easy uh, because I never changed the angle on the tilt table. So I just went back to the tilt table and the 2x72 grinder um, using a, um, a finer grit belt. Yeah, I think I uh, finished it up on a 120. I just cleaned up the bevels. Now, I usually clean up the surface of the knife prior to cleaning up the bevels. I did it backwards on this one. Uh, the, the actual flats of the knife I just cleaned up on the flat platen of the 2x72 and I hold the knife just with a, a handled uh, magnet. It just prevents my fingers from getting burned or, or uh, injured by the belt. Now this gives me a nice clean surface to work with. I'm going to, or the plan is to uh, electro etch the shark face right onto uh, the blade. And this particular design covers not only the blade, but also goes onto the bevel. So I've got my register marks uh, on the, the vinyl. I cut the vinyl out with a Silhouette Cameo uh, Craft vinyl cutting machine. I use a clear transfer film to position that vinyl exactly where I wanted it on the blade. And then I will use a uh, you know, 90 degree pair of tweezers and a little razor knife to start to weed off that vinyl. And by, what I mean by weeding is removing any of the vinyl. When you, when you pull off the vinyl, anything that is exposed is what's going to get etched. So, so those areas are what's going to get um, what's going to end up being dark. Now this particular design, I'm not that talented an artist. Um, I actually had a graphic artist uh, make up this shark face for me. I had seen a, another knife maker make a, a, a knife with a shark, a shark face on the blade um, and really kind of intrigued me. I didn't want to copy his um, and I didn't want to use art that you could find on the internet. So I actually hired somebody uh, to create this uh, stencil for me. 
I'm really happy with the way it came out. So anyway, to etch this, I use a 12 volt automotive battery charger. It's set at uh, you know, 12 volts, 2 amps. Got the positive lead going to the blade, negative lead going to an electroplate. That electroplate is just wrapped with gauze and it is um, moistened with an electrolyte solution. Now I make my own electrolyte solution. It's just uh, white wine vinegar and salt. And a, a lot of people ask me, what's, you know, what's the recipe? What's the um, mixture? How much salt? I, I don't measure it. I just pour, I pour salt into the mix. Um, you know, if you're not getting enough contact uh, or, or etching, add a little bit more salt. The entire process I do in 20-second uh, in increments. So I electro-etch for 20 seconds, and then I let it cool a little bit, and I do another 20 seconds. After every minute, I disconnect the blank, and I actually dip it in cool water um, to let it cool down a bit. The reason is I don't want that blade to overheat um, and make that self-adhesive vinyl lose its adhesion to the steel. I don't want any of that electrolyte solution to get underneath the vinyl. The total etching time is between three and four minutes. And once I'm done, I just remove, I remove that vinyl. Sometimes a little uh, razor knife is helpful just to kind of scrape it off. Notice I've, I've also got vinyl uh, protecting the back of the blade because it sits in moisture. You don't want to inadvertently etch the back of the blade. And then I clean it up with some emery paper, and that then gives you the first, you know, look at what the finished product is going to appear like. So the etching came out really nice, but I wasn't real happy with the bevel. You know, I had polished that bevel so that the uh, etching, you know, would, would not seep underneath the vinyl. But I don't like the way that the bevel looks underneath um, the design. You know, I don't normally etch. I normally etch on the flat of the blade, not, not on the bevel. Um, so, as a knife maker, I don't really try to let anything leave my shop if I'm not happy with it. So I went back to the 2x72 and I ground away all of my blade etching. And my thought here is that in order for it to look good, I'm going to do a, a, a full flat grind so that you're not going to see the bevel at all. And fortunately, the blade was thick enough that I had a little room, I had a little wiggle room to work with. So it took me a little while, you know, the, these etchings are fairly deep, it took me a little while, but you get the idea. Um, so basically I just did a, a, a full flat grind. I re-sanded it so it's all ready for um, the etching again. I'm not going to go through the, the whole process of etching or the, the duration of it, but, you know, again, at this point I, I decided that because I was happy with the uh, design of the etching, I actually did two knives. So I etched them both at the same time, again, you know, between three and four minutes total in 20 second increments, uh, cooling them off after each minute, and then removing the, uh, the vinyl. And you'll see in a minute, I, I think that, that doing this was worthwhile. Once again, clean it up with a little bit of paper. And then, at least to my eye, uh, this blade etching now looks better without that uh, distinct bevel grind underneath uh, the image. So the, the rest of the build is pretty straightforward. Uh, the fossil shark teeth that were embedded into these uh, scales are very hard. Um, so I very carefully drilled holes. I, I drilled one, I'm sorry, I glued one half of the scales onto the blank. 
I used the holes in the blank as a drill guide. And I didn't push that hard. I didn't, you know, I just went in little increments, keeping it cool, and I drilled uh, two pinholes. I then, with a two-part epoxy, glued the other side of the scales onto the blank. And the front edge of the, these have already been um, shaped and polished. You, you know, you can never get to that area uh, to polish after it's, after it's attached to the knife. When you're gluing them together, I make sure that that front edge is perfectly aligned, you know, one side to the other. Um, and then I clamp everything with two or three clamps. Uh, any of the epoxy that gets squeezed out when you clamp them together, you can clean up with a paper towel and then a little alcohol wipe. And that alcohol wipe is also useful uh, for wiping down the entire blade in, in, teach, in case your fingers touch the blade with the epoxy. Now, after I glued the, the pins in, and these are stainless steel pins, um, I'm going to grind those flat so that I can then have a flat surface to work off of when I go to the belt uh, grinder. I'm sorry, to the bandsaw. So I went to the belt grinder, I ground off, this is with a coarse grit belt, uh, I think it was a number, uh, 60 grit. And I cool this pretty frequently in water. I don't want those pins to get real hot. Then want a uh, chance cracking those scales. Then I went over to the bandsaw. Um, this material, you know, it cut, but it was it was a little bit difficult to cut. The fossilized shark teeth are almost, you know, almost like stone. So I removed as much of the scale material as possible on the bandsaw, and then I went back to the two by seventy two, and I finished profiling the blade on a ninety degree table again with a coarse grit belt, uh, number sixty. This process doesn't take long at all. I just go until I, I have um, steel kind of ground through and showing on all sides. Now I also do the curvatures and I start to form and shape those handles right on the 2x72. Um, I use an 80 grit paper or an 80 grit belt. And just be real careful here. You know, if you touch the blade to the belt, you're going to ruin the project at this point. Um, I keep an eye on that, on that very top edge. I also use the, uh, con the bottom 2-inch contact wheel. And I start to shape that inside curve. I'm not doing the finished shaping here. I'm just removing the bulk of the material. It's just a, a very quick way of doing it. I use a small wheel attachment to get um, and polish the inside curve of the blade. And then I go to an oscillating sander, and I, I started at 220, and then I'll go to a, a, a 600, a thousand, um, and a 2,000. I'm sorry, there was also on the on, because of the stone, I actually used a, a 400 in between. So I have a 220, 400. It doesn't take long with each um, grit paper, uh, but getting to that thousand or 2,000 grit makes a huge difference. Um, in getting that, that luster and that shine on the finished product. Uh, then I went to a buffing wheel with a little compound and this was the first chance I had to see how how good looking the scales themselves were really going to be. Now this is the uh, the scales with the conglomerate. The last step in the process, and you can see how how long this whole knife making process is, there's just a, a tremendous amount of steps to it, is going to be sharpening. Now I sharpen my knives right on the 2x72. I, I establish that micro bevel with a 120 grit belt. I hold it at approximately 20 degrees and I establish the bevel until I establish a burr running the entire length of the blade. Then I slow down the machine 
uh, probably 20% or so, uh, and I polish that bevel. So I'll go down through a, an assortment of belts, um, usually 800, um, 1,000, and I get it down to 2,000. The final step is going to be to use a leather stro uh, stroking belt. I don't turn the machine on at this point. I really just use it to, uh, to hold that belt in place on the flat platen, and then I strope it very quickly, and that gives it the razor edge. Now the finished product is literally razor sharp. This is the finished product. So there are actually two versions, one with each of the different handles made on the previous video. As I mentioned before, uh, the blade etching was uh, designed by a graphic artist. The handles have fossil shark teeth embedded or cast in them, and I used a total boat fixed set resin uh, to cast those handles, and I covered that, that entire process on a previous video. I was very happy with the way it came out. Um, I'd like to give you, if any of you guys are interested in, in fishing or boating or, or uh, coastal living, uh, check out uh, www.bluedaysgear.com. We've got an assortment of, of really detailed uh, t-shirts and sweatshirts and windbreakers. And uh, go, to go along with the shark knife, we've actually got a shark fishing theme design coming out uh, within the next week or so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would actually love to hear some feedback, uh, either positive or negative. Um, and I would like to give you an invite to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making, where you can learn more about the process as well as post images of your own builds. Also, check out the book, Introduction to Knife Making, uh, which can be found on Amazon.com. Thank you very much.